we're all good? Yeah. All right, thank you for getting all that set up. Charisma, beautifully done. Of course. <laughs> Today, we're hanging out with Sean, and this is my anniversary. And Sean has a special place with my anniversary, and we're gonna learn all about that today. And uh, Sean, why don't we just go ahead and start with a little introduction, and uh, you can tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, like I said, I'm Sean, and I work for the Richmond Fire Department, and my company does all the swift water calls, and I was actually on the call where um, you were hurt. Mm -hmm. so I was part of the rescue team that got you out of the water, or across the water. Yeah, yeah. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I was hired in 2006, so just over 14 years. Um, I volunteered. I volunteered in Hanover for a couple years before that. But with You've been city, around the block. Right? Yes, with the city, just over 14. What made you want to do it? I don't know. I've always just felt like I wanted to do it. Um, I grew up in Detroit in the mid-80s, and there was always something burning, so there was a lot of exposure yeah. to firefighters and, and oh, that yeah. kind of stuff. So I, I don't know. From everything I can remember, I've always just wanted to. Yeah, that's great. So you mentioned you were there on the call um, when when I was injured. And I think before we hear your side of the story, for anybody that's new, um, I can kind of share my side first and we can sort of see how they compare. August 11th, 2011, um, I went to James River with a few of my friends. And it was just four of us. And um, we, we'd gone to this part of the river a bunch, but it is pretty fast flowing. So, People get injured there all the time. And actually that morning when I was leaving, I asked my mom, I was like, hey, can I go to the river with my friends? And she was like, don't a lot of people get hurt down there? And I was like, well, yeah, but mom, you know, I'm, I'm a really good swimmer. You know, I've swam my whole life. I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And, um, you know, sure enough, how things go with the mother's <laughs> intuition. I dove in when we were crossing the river at one point and uh, I hit my head on a rock just below the surface of the water. I didn't realize what was happening. Um, I was just trying to swim across before the rapids took me into the next set of rapids. So I started kicking and, you know, stroking, trying to cross the river and none of my limbs were moving. And so I opened my eyes and all I could see were my arms just kind of being jostled about in the water and the blood coming out of my head around my arms. Um, and I was like, well, this, this is not good. Something's <laughs> definitely not right here. So I just held on my breath as long as I could before eventually my friend pulled my head up and I got a deep breath. He put me back under and then he flipped me so that my back was on his chest and he scooped his arms underneath my armpits and towed me back to the side of the river from where I dove. And um, he took his bathing suit off. He had his shorts on so he wasn't naked or anything but he needed to do that to stem the blood coming out of my head. Um, and then from there we called 911 and I, I thought it took like 45 minutes for paramedics to get there or firefighters whoever the first responders to get there it felt like an eternity largely because what I could still feel was had become really amplified and like most of my body was just numb and tingling but up here I could feel hypersensitively you know and so laying on those rocks it felt like someone was driving daggers into my shoulders so it felt like it took forever before finally someone got there and when they did, I, all I really remember is being asked, you know, can you feel this? And I'm like, no, I can't feel that. And I was like, can you feel this? No, I can't feel that. Can you feel this? No, dude, I can't, I can't feel it. Right. And um, just getting kind of frustrated and like, why do you keep asking me this? But I learned later he's trying to figure out like how bad the injury yeah. is, the extent of the damage and all that. And then that's the last thing I remember. And from there, I don't, I don't really know what happened. So if you could kind of just start with when the call came in, I mean, what were you doing and what are the first steps? Like, what's the first move? We were at the station, the call came in and we get tons of calls at Pipeline uh, uh -huh. just for accidents, slip and falls, people trapped somewhere and, or can't get back across the water. So it came in, it just comes in as a water rescue at Pipeline. And mm -hmm. so we get all our stuff, get in the trucks, and then we- There wasn't any more information? No, was... there never is in the beginning. Oh, it's interesting. Just, so um, you show up like totally- Well, I, on, the, on the way there, we kind of get a little bit of update if the person that called 911 can give more information. But initially it's just, there's a water rescue, wherever. So on the way there, we didn't really know anything. And then uh, another engine got there first, and that's the guy that swam across to you. And he gave a size up, or he figured out what was wrong with you. 
And then <clears throat> that's when he called us and he was like, this is what I have. I have a head injury, no movement, no, no sensation. Um, so at that point we kind of knew it was the, broken the, yeah, the severity of it and kind of the stuff that we have to bring with us. Uh, like, so we yeah. have to bring like a, a Stokes basket to put you in and okay. what kind of boat we would need and just stuff like that. So between, uh, or how long between the call coming in and that first, the first engine showing up and the first person making it over to me. How long would you? I would say, that? from making contact with you, probably about ten minutes. Ten minutes? Yeah, I would, somewhere around there. <laughs> See, it's crazy the way your mind works when right. it's in shock. Because I, I would have sworn that was like an hour. Yeah. But that's crazy. So ten minutes and they were there. Yeah. So then you all showed up, right? Right. Just, those guys that showed up, they usually like. So we have a thing we get out of the station in under a minute. Oh um, wow from the time the call comes in. So those guys don't have to get the boats, they don't have to get all of the water stuff ready, they can just jump in the engine and go. Oh, I see. So they got there a lot quicker than us, and then he ran down to the pipe, saw where you were, and then he swam across. So he got, they got there fairly quick. So like scouts, and then you right. all come in as a reinforcement. Yep, so yeah, they, so they'll dispatch the water teams, and then two other engines that can kind of go there and just figure out what's going on, where the actual call is. So then when your engine showed up, can you just like describe the scene that you arrived to? Like, was it hectic? Was it like, what was happening? Pretty hectic. There's a lot of people around. Um, a lot of people. But the good thing is that we actually had somebody over there with you already. So we had radio communication with them, and they kind of just gave us a, a, the details of what was going on and what we needed. Yeah. So that part was good. Not having to listen to a bunch of people yell at us and tell us where we needed to go and, <laughs> and what we needed. We could just kind of get it from the the officer that was over there. Right. So we brought our boat and the Stokes basket and some rope. We had a guy swim over to your side, one of our swimmers, and then we threw a, um, a rope over to him and hooked up our boat. So we had two ropes connected to the boat and then we kind of like ferried it across mm -hmm. with uh, all the equipment and the Stokes basket. So the paramedic went over there with one of our swimmers and they kind of got you on the backboard and then in the basket, um, put a life jacket on you. Mm -hmm. And then I pulled you guys across with the paramedic riding on the boat with you and then our swimmer was holding onto the boat. There's actually a Pretty cool, like newspaper clipping of it. Yeah, yeah. Kind of I think we can overlay that yeah. uh, and show people what what that scene kind of looked like. So relative to other days, with like the water level rising and falling, um, was it, was it more mild or was it rougher water that day? Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, it was around like six feet. It's a good height for the kayakers to play in mm -hmm. in the rapids, but like swimming across is difficult, and just for a regular swimmer, it's it's a little. Got to work for it. Yeah. So pulling the raft across uh, is that especially challenging, or is that? Uh, not really, because we we'll usually use the current to. Uh, so I'll be pulling it across, and then the current will actually just push the boat, like kind of like pendulum over to us. Uh, oh, so, that's right. Yeah, you like swing it around. Yeah. So just yeah. use use what the river gives us. So then you got to like find a way to get me to a, like an outlet, right? Right. So the the ambulance was staged at the. Um, at the Overlook, kind of by 12th Street. So there's a little quarry right there, and then there's a little path that goes up to uh, where the ambulance was. So uh, the other swimmer and myself took the raft and then swam it down to where the quarry is, and then we swam it across to where the ambulance was. And then we had to carry you up some rocks and mm -hmm. then put you on the stretcher. Was that heavy? <laughs> a little bit. I was a heavy guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got all the stuff, plus it's waterlogged and it's yeah, just, so. and a limp weight and all that. Right, yeah. So. <laughs> So I, I keep bringing up the time just because, you know, I, I have no idea. From when the call came in to when, I mean, the ambulance, how long do you think that was? It was under an hour. Under an hour? Yeah. That's fast. Is that average? Like, is that your typical time? It was, I think it was fast because we had somebody over there with you that gave us a good size of what we needed. Yeah. So we knew exactly what we needed to bring with us and we train on that. Evolution a lot, so I see you had a lot of nature rehearsal. Yeah. Yep, so that's cool. Um, and it's not it's not really in depth to set up. It's just two ropes on a boat, and you just pull it across, and mm -hmm. so it's it's relatively quick. So it sounds like a lot of it was pretty like routine stuff. Yeah. Was there anything that did stand out to you on this call that um that sticks out in your memory? Um, I think the the one thing that sticks out is throughout the whole call, like the contact I had with you, like you didn't, you were just kind of like staring, obviously, because <laughs> the significant yeah. injury. <laughs> and we swam you down, got you across the quarry, got you to the ambulance, and then we put you on the on the stretcher. And the, the, very, the only thing and the very last thing you said, you, you thanked me. Mm -hmm. And that was all, that was all you said, you were, thank you. And that kind of like just stuck with me. I was like, after everything he's going through and 
Hey, at least. Yeah. It was nice enough to say thank you. So well, I guess I guess I wasn't in such shock that I like lost I lost my manners. <laughs> lost my manners or I didn't realize what was happening. Right. Like with y'all, you know, were literally saving my life. So I would like to tell you again, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that. And it's so cool. We were just doing our house renovations and uh, we were at Home Depot when recently, right? And that's when we ran into each other like Oh my gosh, this is so cool because we hadn't seen each other in years. I haven't seen them not since that day. Not since that day. Yeah. And, and then in Home Depot, it's like, whoa, everything kind of comes rushing back yeah. at once. And then we're like, all right, we got to get together and talk right. about this. And yeah, I kind of followed your story throughout the years. So I, I mean, I knew everything was going on for the most part. And then when I was shopping, I just kind of turned around and saw you. And I was like, yeah, hey, I know you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I'm curious with my situation, like, it was obviously crazy terrible what happened but you know i'm very happy with my life now i've mm -hmm. got a beautiful fiance and we have a beautiful home and future that we're starting so this was it ended up good but i imagine that there are cases where that's not the reality yes so in those cases i mean you i, I imagine you carried that with you a little bit i mean is that way on you yeah it does <laughs> yeah i bet yeah there's i mean it, on average i was probably three to five people die in the James in our area uh, every year. Man. So, so yeah, if you're on the call and it's, it can weigh on you a lot. Do you, do you have a way to kind of try to slough it off or you know, <laughs> like deal with that? Because that kind of stuff can be insidious. Yeah. Uh, I think if people came back to the firehouse and listened to us talk, they would think that we were really deranged for them. Mm -hmm. um, Cause mostly we joke about stuff. Like our whole way of getting through stuff and dealing with stuff is just a sense of humor. Yeah, you just got to laugh yeah, just it. Yeah, not, not the call obviously, right, but just, right. just make stupid jokes about other stuff to kind of get our mind off it or just work through it. And I also talk to my wife about a lot of stuff. Yeah, I For bet. the most part. And just lean on her for some strength. Yeah, but yeah. there's there's still stuff that always stays with you. Like I'll go past the river at, to certain places and just kind of remember stuff, so. Mm -hmm. We've heard both sides of the story now. Did you have any questions by chance? Like anything that like you weren't sure about or wanted to clarify? Um, I mean, we talked about this before, but I wasn't, we, we thought that you were, the story we got, like you were in between football practice, all that. Football I, practice. Yeah, that's, that's the story I got. So there was a lot of <laughs> yeah. different little things going on. I didn't actually know that it was like, yeah, the no. story of what you guys were doing there. I mean, I was there with all my lacrosse friends. Okay. So that's maybe where the sports come right. in. But it was just, we were just going there to hang out and have fun. <laughs> I do remember though there was another group of kids there, high school kids, guys, um, and they played for the James River lacrosse team. Okay. And of course, when they showed up and our, our lacrosse group saw their group, we're like looking at them like, oh, you know, <laughs> we're better at lacrosse, whatever. Right. <laughs> um, but what ended up happening after uh, I got hurt and I was bleeding, you know, my friend took his bathing suit off and that was useful for a moment. Mm -hmm. but. Um, what we needed were dry fabric, right. and so those guys, those James River guys, actually got their shirts, put it on a boogie board that they brought, and towed it across the river so we had dry shirts to try to stop the blood. And um, I remember that being, that was just like really cool. Right. And I don't know if y'all are out there watching this, but thank <laughs> you. I don't think I met you guys yet, but y'all did me a big one. Thanks. <laughs> Go to Home Depot. Yeah, yeah, we'll meet you at Home Depot. <laughs> so just to wrap it up, uh, I, if you had any advice for someone who's considering like your occupation, what would you tell them? Like, what what should they prepare for, and uh, what should they expect? It's the best job there is. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Um, and I would just say apply everywhere. They don't take applications all the time. It's like maybe once a year, and even then, it's twelve, thirteen hundred people apply for a couple positions. So it's really, wow. really hard to get into. I had no idea it was so competitive. Yeah, um, I think there was twelve hundred people on my list. And I was one of the, was it 23? So, wow. Just apply everywhere. You know, every place that's how like Chesterfield, Henrico, Rich, Hanover, mm -hmm. all that local areas. You can go down to Virginia Beach, just keep applying and then going through the process and you learn how to do your interviews better and what they're looking for. Um, most places don't want you to be trained. They want to teach you what they want you to do. Interesting. So the best thing you can do is just keep putting applications in and going wherever. Right. Volume. Volume. Yes. Large, large lots, numbers. Lots, yes. Just keep working on the interview because that's the big thing. Well, speaking of interview, thank you for coming in Thanks and, for having and me. talking. <laughs> and um, this is, I think this is the perfect nine year anniversary conversation. <laughs> thank you for this. Glad you're here thank for it. You. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very glad I'm here for it too. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. All right, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that conversation as well. Um, 
Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and stay positive. Is that good, babe? Yeah. Usually you do it, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. I think that was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, Wasn't thank that you.